Have you spent most of 2018 doing everything and feeling massively overwhelmed by and exhausted by doing all those things? So today I want to give you a couple of tips about how you can step away from doing all the things and create more space for you and your business to grow in 2019. Hi, I'm Airely. I'm a systems and scaling strategist and I help other people in business get organized and systemize their business so that they can grow. So scaling your business is a really key strategy for stepping away from the day-to-day -day stuff. There are so many things that usually you have to do and you can become the bottleneck because everything relies on you and oh my goodness, that is exhausting. So today I wanna to give you a couple of strategies about why this is important. If you've been resistant to systemizing, then I wanna give you a few tips on why it's okay to systemize and that taking the time to do it is well worth the effort. And then I'll give you some tips on how you can do that so that 2019 leaves you with more space to do those things that you love. Okay, let's get into it. So if you've been resistant to scaling and systemizing, I totally get that. I know it's, it can feel like it's getting in the way of your flow and that structure is a horrible, terrible word. But trust me, it's actually your friend because it creates more space for you to be creative. There is absolute freedom in structure and it's, uh, it's really helpful because otherwise I've noticed those people that, that do love flow, they do also tend to feel out of control and like, all the things that reliant on them and they're a bit disorganized and that all the things are due all of the time because there is no structure. Structure can really be helpful. So I want to give you a few reasons why it's okay to start to systemize your business. It doesn't mean that you will lose control and it doesn't mean that it will be a rigid, inflexible business where you have to do this at this time. Um, it, it's just a guide, a structure, so that you can be more creative rather than being held down by doing all the things. Because I know that that is exhausting. And that feeling exhausting, exhausted, is absolutely going to kill your creativity. Can you see where I'm going here? So having a systemized business really saves you time. And when you have more time, you can be more creative. You can connect with people. You can have more time to market your business. Um, and that involves a lot of creativity. So if you're stuck in the admin, then that's gonna suck your energy. There's no creativity involved in admin at all. You can often be feeling like you're wasting your time doing admin because you wanna be doing the creative stuff, but the admin has to happen. So that's how, that's one of the key reasons why scaling and systemizing your business is really important. Systemizing first before you start to scale. So one of the other reasons why you might be resistant is that everything is in your head and maybe it's not resistant. It's more that you, you find it hard to systemize because you don't know where to start, but it's because everything is in your head and that's okay. It just means you need to take time to get the stuff out of your head. Start putting tasks in, into a sign of, I'm getting to that later, so I'll stop now. So where it's hard to systemize when everything is in your head. So can you see that when everything is stuck with you, your business is designed for you doing all of those things. So nothing will change until you extract all of that stuff out of your head and start to document it so that then you can then start to outsource it. Otherwise, you'll still be doing the same things this time next year. So you might also notice that it's hard to be consistent with your content. Maybe you're not getting your newsletter out enough. Maybe it's hard work getting your Facebook content out regularly, um, let alone blogging. So that consistency helps grow your business. But if you're finding it difficult being consistent because there's no systems, no kind of, no structure around that because it's hard work, then um, having a system there can really help you get that done even do lots of it, batching, so that you can get ahead. And that's, again, where you can create more creativity and more flow. So systems can also help you have better customer service because there's a process um, and, you, and a consistent way of dealing with people. You don't lose leads because you forget where they came in. And it helps you feel better about your 
you know, work-life balance that you're not tied to your computer all the time because you can actually outsource or systemize things, automate a few things that can still be personalized. So there's more time for you. There's more space for you. So let's look at how we can create a more spacious 2019. We'll look at why and hopefully I'll convince you that some of these reasons are a really good reason why systemizing and having a systemizing strategy in 2019 can help you actually get into that flow. More creativity, more space, more time for connection. That's, that's the result of systems. So a good, reason, a good way to look at how to do this is to look at your 2018. Do a review. Now is a good time to do this. I'm recording this in December 2018. So looking at your 2018, looking at what didn't work, where you got stuck, where you were frustrated, what took up all your time, what you hated doing, looking at all of those things and getting really clear on that. And then to balance that out, looking at where you want to be by the end of 2019. If you have big plans for 2019, but you're still going to be stuck doing those things that you hate from 2018, then something has to change. And systems is the way that you can do that. So if you've got a really clear idea of what you want to achieve in 2019, then you can map out what, how you're going to do that. And sometimes that will mean delegating some things so that you have time for those extra tasks. Sometimes it will mean looking at deleting some of the things that you don't want to do anymore, some of the things that didn't work. If you're spreading yourself too thin, then get rid of the things that didn't work so that you can focus on, the, on those goals. And if you are looking at systemizing some of those things, so that you have more time for your 2019 goals, then you can start to document the process. Anytime you do it, any, any repetitive process that you do, record yourself doing it so that you've got a bank of you doing the tasks. Get it out of your head. That brain extraction process is key because until you do that, you can't start to outsource those things in your business. Everything will still be with you and looking at what you can simplify. Because I know in my own experience, when things have been complicated or they've been clunky or I've made lots of mistakes, it's meant that I've needed to simplify, get really clear on what I want to happen and then create a system for it. And a system can be a checklist, a process, what else? A tool, finding a tool that helps me or automating it so that I, it's not reliant on me that systems can be really flexible for you. They don't all have to be techie. They can just be a step-by-step -step process that's out of your head and on paper so that it's closer to you outsourcing that. So when you have really clear vision of 2019, that really helps to go, okay, this is how I can achieve what I want to do. It helps you then work backwards and reverse engineer. If I want this, that means I have to do, uh, let's be more specific. If I want to grow my list by you know, 200 people in two months or three months, then I need to have more time to create the opt-in. I need to have more time to market the opt-in, to do Facebook Lives. I need space for that. I'm not sure if you're like me, but I need a lot of space to be able to have the energy to do Facebook Lives and to be present on social media all the time. So therefore, if I'm exhausted from doing all the admin or being tied to my desk, working long hours, it's not going to happen and therefore my marketing will flop. So by noticing that, I can work out what I need to let go of, what I could hand over to someone else if they could create it for me or market it for me or schedule it for me or schedule all the other things, do my newsletter, whatever that may be that allows me to achieve my goal and be really focused on that goal. And to do that, you might need to get your system set up so that you can then find a VA. So you can see how working backwards means that this is where we need to start in 2019. So it could be uh, month three is handing it over to a VA. Month two might be sourcing a VA and training a VA. And month one might be getting those processes down, getting really clear on what they are and what you want a VA to do so that you can start to outsource that work and, and work as a team so that you're not spread so thin. So if you want to create more space in 2019, 
really get clear on what didn't work in 2018, what you want to let go of, and get really clear on what you want to achieve in 2019 so that you can step that out, reverse engineer it, work backwards, and plan what you need to start with so that you can start to delete some things, delegate some things, systemize some things to create that time for you, create that space, make 2019 a really spacious time. So if you want a systems audit to see how you could do that or what, where to start, like, yes, great, you're sold, but where do you start? Then I have a free systems audit that you can book into and set up a time, fill out a questionnaire so that I can assess your systems and identify which ones you need to start with first based on your goals. So it's the exact same process that I would do. So there you go, some ways to create more space for you in 2019. Thanks very much. I'm Ellie Wildy. Bye.